that right? If not, I apologize. Michelle, are you ready? I think you're muted. I am. Can okay. you hear me now? Happy Sabbath, yes. everyone. Happy Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I am out. My family and I um, decided to spend the day out in nature, but I thought I wouldn't bring all of nature in, so I'm in my vehicle at this time for the sound sake. But um, in these past weeks, in these last few days especially, with everything going on, we have to keep our eyes on the prize and let there be nothing that comes between our soul and our Savior. So I hope you all are blessed as I am by this song. Nothing between my soul and my Savior, not of this world or my fondest dreams. I have renounced all sin and its pleasure. Jesus is mine, there's nothing between, nothing between worldly pleasures, my habits of life, though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever severed. He is my all. There's nothing between. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Nothing between, not even life's trials. Though this whole world against me convene, watching with prayer and much self-denial, triumph at last with nothing between for I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I to your will, all to your way, God. Yes, I surrender, I surrender all. Amen, amen. Thank you for that, Michelle, for that beautiful um, rendition reminding us that there's nothing between, there should be nothing between us and our Savior. Now, uh, now, We'll be moving on to our message from um, Pastor Brooks, the man who needs no introduction, man of God. And uh, so Pastor Brooks, I hand it over to you as I see you there in your um, Superman. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Ella Campbell. And again, Gosh. happy Sabbath uh, to everyone. Thank you, Sister Michelle, for that wonderful song reminding us that we need to surrender all to Jesus. This is our 
prayer each and every day. And thank you, Azalea, for uh, that wonderful scripture reading. I love to see uh, when our young people uh, get involved, especially our children. So Azalea, thank you, Ella Gray, um, for leading us in, in uh, prayer, uh, actually for the appeal, for the offertory, and uh, Elder Madison uh, for bringing us before the throne of God in prayer. Thank you. Uh, also my wife uh, for uh, helping in the children's story, as well as in the help nugget. Sister Sharp for uh, a beautiful job in our song service. Um, we're appreciative of each person's involvement. Uh, we're appreciative of those who are at home, uh, those who may be in their vehicle, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, we're just happy for uh, your prayers, happy for your support. And we want you as well to share uh, these messages, these songs, these prayers on your Facebook page. Let your friends be aware this is one way that we're able to witness and do our small part. Um, the All Nations Church desires to share the love of Jesus to every heart and hope. That's our vision. That's what we want to see happen. And we want to do so, obviously, before Jesus comes. We want to play our part and our role. Uh, today, I'm going to be speaking on a topic that probably may be already manifested to you, but the title is uh, Supermen. Supermen. And thank you, Aisha, for bringing up that graphics. So you can see Supermen. We want to uh, look and see how God is working in the lives of men. And, and ladies, this is not just about men. The principles are applicable to you as well. But last week, we, we celebrated Father's Day or the weekend. And uh, the message last week, I believe, was spirit-led. Um, but we didn't really touch any topic dealing with men. And I don't want to allow the men off the hook. We, we've got to come to a place where we understand our role, we understand what we need to do, and how we need to step up. So I've entitled this message, Superman. So please don't forget this message. Don't let this church, this shirt's purchase go in vain. This is for you, men. And, and, little, and young boys as well, young men, adults, we want you to understand uh, God's word for you today. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. And even now, as we look at the topic, Superman, Lord, you have a word for each person. You have a message that you want to present. And so I'm just going to ask you to hide me and allow that your word will go forth with power and clarity in Christ's name. Amen. Now, if you turn your Bibles you, 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 to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13, which was so eloquently read by Azalea, the Bible says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you, quit you like men, be strong. And verse 14, let all your things be done with charity. Yeah, very interesting that, that Paul, in addressing the Corinthians, would say to them, I want you to, to, to quit yourself or, or uh, conduct yourself like men. Play the part of men, act like men, be courageous, live like men. Powerful statement, but, but Paul is, is, is advocating for them to conduct themselves in a way that is faithful. He said, stand fast in the faith. So he's using as a reference point, he's more or, or less likely using as a reference point, biblical characters in the Bible. And he's saying to them, be men of valor. Be men of sound doctrine. Be men who are firm in the faith. I, I want to probably add and say that Paul is encouraging the saints to be uh, supermen, uh, supermen plural. He wants us now to, 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 to be firm. He wants us to be brave. He wants us to be uh, men of valor. And he's given us some reference points. For us today, when you see this logo, you're thinking of the fictional character Superman who's able to leap over a tall building in a single bound or, or speed past a locomotive or even stop that locomotive and to uh, fly faster than a speeding bullet. Those are all nice things. And when we see this logo, yes, it reminds us of that, that Superman that was a childhood hero for so many of us. But Paul today is advocating 
for us to be like the men in scripture, men of valor, men who, you know, in the daytime, they don't have to cover uh, their, their, their superpowers and to hide from society. No, Paul is advocating for us to be like men in the Bible, supermen who show their colors every and anywhere they go and any time of day. Men. Men are very important. Uh, last week, uh, Wednesday, we had a very good uh, conversation uh, on talking with men. El Ashoka did a wonderful job of that. And the need of, of, of men who will stand, the need of, of men who will mentor other men. Even in the wild, we see this principle displayed um, because when, when, when the male elephants are, are taken away, and these are the adult male elephants, let me just say, because they've been hunted uh, so, 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 so much and you know, in, in such an inhumane manner, there's a shortage of adult male elephants. And what happens with the, the young elephants that grow up without uh, a, a, an adult male is that they become like juvenile delinquents. Uh, they, they even had a name for them, delinquent elephants, where it wasn't uncommon for people to see these, these young elephants running wild, tearing down trees and crushing other creatures. In fact, in one park, I believe it was in South Africa, the elephants had killed the rhinos. They, they usually were living at peace with each other, with, in peace with each other. But because they had no adult male influence, these elephants were ravishing and killing the rhinos. And, you know, to, to solve it, they had to bring in uh, one of, uh, of the male elephants from the Kroger National Park. And, and they, they brought in this male elephant that was about in his 40s. And immediately as a male elephant came, uh, one of the younger male elephants came and, and, and tried to, to, to test this large male. And immediately that male just shoved that one down to the ground and all the other elephants fell in line. Immediately they toned down and they realized now they had somebody to watch. They had somebody to emulate. I'll tell you this. Men need men in society to show them how to be supermen, to show them how to live, to show them how they ought to treat others. We need men. And this world is short on supermen. Now, growing up for me, my model, and, and, and even today, and thank God my father is alive, is my father. My father is, is a powerful role model in my life. I remember growing up in uh, Montego Bay, and every Sunday morning at about six in the morning, as soon as the, the sun is starting to come up, we were in our vehicles going down to the beach, Sunset Beach. Those who have been to Jamaica, you know where Sunset Beach is. Um, and every morning there, we're going out swimming. And my father would pick up his brothers and uh, my uncles, and we'd all get into that vehicle and get down there and start swimming. I just enjoyed splashing into that water. But one thing, uh, and as a, as a five-year-old, let me come to that age, you know, I didn't know how to swim at that point. I was a scrawny little boy. But my uncles and, and, and my father would try to teach us how to swim and teach me how to swim. But in the midst of that, uh, they used to have fun with me. So they would pick up this little boy and throw me high in the, in the air. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm splashing in the water. And because I didn't know how to swim, you know, my reflexes was to go deep into the ground and immediately try to touch the sand. And when I couldn't touch the sand, that's when I'm now splashing and, and paddling, doing dog paddles, trying to get out of there. And they would sometimes do this over and over. And you can forgive them. They were having fun. They were laughing, doing belly up laughter. And you would think when I got to the shallow end that I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to come back to the water again. I would just run away and never come back. No, I would look back at these men, my heroes, and I would say, I need to overcome and conquer my fear of the sea. I need to learn how to swim. So back to the water I went because I wanted to be like these men, especially when they would go out into the deep and all you can see were their, were their heads bopping out, way up <laughs> into the horizon. And I said, I can't wait for the day 
I can swim like that. You see, I needed them in my life to, to be that role model for me to pursue uh, how to, to do various activities um, and how to at least be a man and live like a man. And that's only with the point of swimming. But there are many other areas of learning because it's because of their teaching why I actually learned how to swim. That's the job of a man. You've got to teach. You've got to learn. You've got to model. You've got to share uh, good advice. Now, coming or learning to be a, a, a superman uh, a, 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 is, is not something that basically you're going to just, it's just going to drop into your mind and drop into your lap. No. Uh, as my uncles had to teach me how to swim, and my father as well, in order to be a good swimmer, uh, it takes men often to train men. And using the word of God in scripture, we can take the lives of some real supermen and learn examples from them as to say how we can learn to be men right now. So you don't have to turn off this screen and say, well, I don't have much men in my life. My father is not here. My uncles are distant. I don't have any examples. No, 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 no. We can have, and we have great examples in the word of God of some men whom we can emulate. So today I'm going to share with you uh, five attributes of, of supermen that we need to, to emulate. Five attributes that we can model in our lives. Number one, attribute number one, supermen possess integrity. Supermen possess integrity. Now, when you think of integrity, you're thinking of moral soundness or somebody who is honest. Uh, you know, they're, 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 they have principle and they, a level of decency. So basically, a man of integrity is someone who lives by his word. What is said is meant. What is said is done. Their yes means yes, and their no means no. Uh, they have integrity. Sadly, today in society, we find that people... Uh, sometimes lack integrity, uh, lack that firm principle when tested. One study uh, showed, you know, a question was asked to, in a survey, what would you do for $10 million? Two thirds of Americans polled would agree to at least one, some to several of the following. And what was this? For $10 million, some would abandon their entire family. 25% said, I'm gone. <laughs> I don't even, I'm not even looking at my family again. Another 25% said they would abandon their church. See you, pastor. They're gone. 23% uh, said they would become prostitutes for a week. So, you know, they're not going to glorify God in their body. They, they're going to just sell themselves out for $10 million. 16% said they'd give up their American citizenship. 16% said they would leave their spouses. I'm sorry for those who are married to that 16%. 10% uh, said they would withhold testimony and let a murderer go free so they can easily be bribed. 7% said it would, they would kill a stranger. 7% said they would kill a stranger, and 3% said they would put up their children for adoption. So my children, you don't have to worry. I won't sell you out for $10 million. I love you guys too much. But this is the scenario that we're facing. For Judas in the Bible, 30 pieces of silver was enough for him to give up his Lord and Savior. Judas is not an example of a superman. No. Judas was willing to give up his integrity for 30 pieces of silver, and he didn't even get a chance to spend it when the guilt came upon him. Now, your integrity is, is, is all that you really have in this life. You see, your family was built around you because of your integrity. Society is built upon trust, and your word, your word, come on, man, your word is all that society can depend on. When a, when a woman walks down the aisle and, and holds your hands and commits to you, they have listened to your words, your word of integrity. 
uh, they're, they're, they're trusting that your pledge means that they can now pledge their bodies to you, their future, and their dreams to you. Your integrity was the reason they married you. So when your wife, gentlemen, come on now, when your wife turns to you at night and says, I'm okay for some TLC tonight, uh, your wife is in fact saying that I trust you with my body. I entrust you with my heart. And there are a thousand ways, she's saying, that you can harm me both physically and mentally, but I am trusting that the same man of integrity that I married is the same man I am lying with tonight. Uh, one of the men in scripture that, that, that really um, can, can, can highlight what integrity is all about is Daniel. In the Bible, Daniel chapter 6 and verse 4, there was a point where uh, the, the, the leaders around him hated him. They despised him. And they wanted to find some fault or error in him. And you can read Daniel chapter 6 tonight or this evening. But Daniel represents the, the kind of person or employee any boss would hire. For Daniel, you can place money and resource before him and, and be secured that he will protect and handle it well. There are some... Brethren who, if you put money before them, you might as well put uh, BK Whopper and some fries in front of them. That's gone. <laughs> it's gone with the wind. But for Daniel, he was a man of integrity. And he was consistent throughout the day with that uh, level of integrity. He did what was right at work. He did it at home. Now, what's interesting is that they came at his home to see if he was the same person at home as he was in the king's palace. And sure enough, Daniel was the same man of integrity at home. In fact, they were betting that he would be a man of integrity at home so that they would arrest him. People need to see that you have integrity in society when you're on the road. They need to see that you have integrity when you're at home. Your children need to see that you're a man of integrity. They need to see that what daddy says in the pulpit, what daddy says in, the, with the, in church with the other members, what daddy says at work is what daddy means at home. They have to see that you are a man of integrity. Remember, you're teaching them to be supermen as well. Now, what you see with a man of integrity is what you get. Now, today you may be saying, well, pastor, listen, I, I messed up. You know, I'm, I'm not that man of integrity. Does that mean I'm not a superman? <laughs> and the answer is no. There is hope. Because that comes to our second point. This is our second point. Supermen learn from their mistakes. So if you want to be a superman, if you want to be a part of supermen, plural, you have to learn from your mistakes. And I'm not going to ask for a show of hands uh, uh, who have done silly things in times past, uh, whether you said a boneheaded word to someone and, and regretted to this day or, or did something that you later regretted. We've all uh, had that. We've all had those those embarrassing situations. And thank God we serve a merciful father. But it is here on this point where the character of real men is developed. If you wanna be a superman, you gotta to come to this place where you, you admit your mistakes. But a, a, a real man, a real man will stop and evaluate what he did and see if it was wrong. And if it's wrong, a real man will go forward and say, I'm sorry. This is hard. I know. This is hard. In scripture, Jesus tells a parable of a, a real man. And this is the prodigal son who went out in Luke chapter 15 and just messed himself up. He was spending his father's wealth gambling. He blew it on parties, blew it on seasonal friends who just comes and goes. And his integrity was at an all-time low. Now he's dead broke. He's, he's now feeding pigs and he's looking at the pig's food like, man, this is good stuff. I wish I could eat some of that. This was now his all-time low. This, you can't go much lower than that. 
uh, the devil was probably whispering in his ear, listen, uh, just go take a rope, hang yourself, just get it out of the way. You have nowhere to go. You've messed up badly. You've messed up with your family. You've messed up with your friends. Your brother doesn't want to see you again. Your father doesn't want to see you again. And he was at an all point, all time low. But this man, instead of giving up, he, he, he started, the Bible says he came to himself. He came to his senses. That's when he's now introspectively looking at his life. He's looking at his mistakes because we do make mistakes. We're, no one here is perfect. And he's looking and he's studying the things he did to harm his family, to harm his, his friends, to, to harm those around him. And the Bible says he came to himself. The Holy Spirit was still working in this man's life. And he said, I'm going to go back to my father. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to plead with him and, and ask for forgiveness. And we know this story as he went back. And let me tell you, friends, that first step back is challenging. That step where you say, it's time for me to go and make it right is a difficult place for you to, to come to. But it's a manly place for you to be. So Paul says, quit yourselves like men. Be brave like a man and learn to go and apologize when you have made a mistake. You know, it matters not if you're in prison. It matters not if you've been sentenced for some crime you've done. This is a place where you have to come and say, I did something wrong. I need to confess it. I need to make it right. Now, I remember as a, as a little child, I don't know how old I was, but I was just maybe a, 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 older than, a little bit older than a toddler. But I remember my, my father punished me for something I didn't do. Um, so don't worry, Daddy. It wasn't that a big deal. But, but, you know, for a child, it's a big deal when you didn't do something and your father is, is scolding you for that. And my children are now watching and saying, yeah, Dad, we, <laughs> we're going to have a conversation after this sermon. But listen, I, I remember on the bed, just upset and vexed with my father. And he came into the bedroom and he said to me, you know, son, um, I'm sorry. I, 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 I got it mixed up and I'm sorry about that. And everything else that he said was just mumbo jumbo because I, I was just mesmerized by the thought that my father was apologizing for something he did. What that did at that young, tender age was teach me that a, a, a real man, a man like my father, it's okay for a real man like that to apologize. I don't know if my father understood the lessons he taught me as a young boy that day, but as he exited that room, I was just filled with awe. And, and fathers out there, Listen to me, when you apologize to your children, when you've done them wrong, it does something in their lives. You don't even know how, how far reaching that apology may be. And, and husbands out there, if you can apologize to your spouse when you, when you said something wrong or, 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 or misspoke or, or just did some foolish deed, if you can come and learn the art of apologizing from the heart, saying, I am sorry, you are now in line of being a superman. Come on. Now, one of the, the um, a man in scripture as well that easily can follow in that line is David. King David, a man of man, uh, able to kill a, a giant and lead an army. And when he messed up, and you know the story of David, he messed up big time, committing adultery, killing a brother, um, you know, lying to everybody around him. But when the prophet came and confronted David, this Superman, instead of with the powers he had, he could have said, off with the prophet's head. David looked at him and said, I have sinned against God. And he repented. That is what real men, super men do. They apologize when they've made a mistake and they come before God and ask for forgiveness. And they come before others whom they have wronged and they ask for forgiveness. That is a superman. Now, third point, supermen, supermen, are spiritual leaders. Supermen are spiritual leaders. Now, this is where I have a strong burden. You know, I have a very strong burden and passion uh, in this area for the men. You see, in the area of spirituality, God is looking for men 
to, to, to stand and, 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 and really represent. Now, what am I talking about? For some of our visitors who are listening and, and, and from other places right now, other churches, if I came to your church and I said to you, I need some prayer warriors to surround me, you know, nine times out of 10, I will see uh, some dear church sisters coming towards me to pray for me. And I'll see a man um, who is being dragged against his will to come into that group to pray. Now, you, you may counter me on that, but I'm, I'm just telling you what I've seen in visiting many churches. And I say, can you pray? I need a prayer team right now. And the ladies are there. And there's nothing wrong with the ladies being there. But there's something wrong when you can't find any man praying and any man there interceding. And I don't want to speak about my church because we have a prayer group in the morning. And I, let me just keep my mouth quiet. The man, you know what I'm talking about. Now, <laughs> somebody says true. That's right. Uh, you see, this is where men need to step up. We need supermen who are prayer warriors, supermen who are spiritual. It is not, um, let me just say, it is manly to be spiritual. It is manly to be a prayer warrior. Uh, in scripture, you will find several examples of that. But in our homes, in each home around here, God is asking the men to, to, to be a head in the home, to be the head in the home. What, you know, I have a head, as you can see. Now, now, the head has a function. So God is saying, men, you have a function in your home. Now, if you're just a head and you're not functioning, you know, it's best that the ladies get another head. You're not doing anything in the home. The men are there for a reason. Now, on your head, you'll notice uh, you have eyes. We need men in the homes who can see danger and warn their families. Spiritual leaders who can see from afar and say, I see danger. I see my kids going into some issues. I need to go and help. Your head has a mouth. Uh, you need to speak up when things are not going right spiritually. Your voice in the home is important. It's critical. It must not be on spiritual matters alone. Uh, your spouse is the one speaking and, and sharing all the godly things while you are quiet and not saying anything. All you're talking about is politics. You need to speak up about the things that are godly as well. You have a head has ears. You need to keep a listening ear to the needs of your family. How can you petition before God if you don't know what's going on in your family's life? It is said that the average father spends five minutes in conversation, in real conversation with their children per week. Uh, how will you know what your children are going through if you're not listening to them? How do you know what your spouse is going through if you're not listening? The function of the head is to listen as well. And obviously, uh, God gives your head a nose, and the nose can smell when something is up. If something is fishy, the nose can smell it. And you need to be aware when things are going on in your home. You need to be able to smell danger and alert your family and tell them, listen, something isn't right with the spirit. We need to get things going. My brothers and sisters, this is where supermen step up. And in scripture, we find that Job was such a superman. Now, 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 Job was a real man, a real brother, not because of his wealth, but because of the attribute found in him. He was a praying man. The Bible says before the sun came up, and in our lesson study today, we, we talked about the need to get up early and pray and talk to God. Well, the Bible says of Job that before the sun came up, he was offering a sacrifice on behalf of his children. Not on behalf of himself. He was praying on behalf of his children. And his children may have been in their 20s and 30s by now. And who knows the temptations that they were facing. But Job was praying for them. Praying that God would bless his children. Praying that God would help them and sanctify them. Job was not going to leave that to chance. Job was doing what he as a spiritual and godly man must do. He was praying and interceding for his family. That is is a duty that, that men need to equip themselves to do. 
when I come to your home and I say, listen, I need some prayer warriors, both husband and wife should be there to say, let's pray together. Turn the TV off, turn the internet off, turn the, 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 the football, basketball. No, no, no. This is a time where you have to jump in and say, let us pray. It is a duty of supermen to be intercessors for their family members and their friends. And Job set that example. Now, now on the, 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 third, the fourth point, real men and supermen here, supermen are community leaders. Supermen are community leaders. Now, in Israel, when the war cry was heard, men from all walks of life would, uh, would appear on the battlefield. And it, and it was known, every man knew, that if the enemy broke through the lines, uh, their women and children, their, their livelihood would be destroyed. And this was no place for the weak and timid. In fact, in the Bible, God says, if you feel afraid, don't come on the battlefield. So those who came on the battlefield knew that, listen, I am standing up for my children. I'm standing up for my, 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 my society. I'm standing up. So they, they came out. Those who love their children, they came out. Those who love their wives and family, they came out and would do all to protect them. The men would band together to protect their communities. And it was the least that they can do or could do as men. And I have a question for you. When it comes to our community, how involved are you, men, in your community? Can they see that you are one of the supermen whom God has appointed to be in that community, to act as a salt and a light in that community? Now, now, now because I know you live in a community, I have this next question for you. If you were to disappear, if you were to disappear from your community today, would your neighbors miss you? Would your neighbors even know that you're missing and that you disappeared? You know, sad to say in our time, in our society, um, sometimes you know somebody's dead when you see like um, a news van pull up. <laughs> you don't, you, and that could be like four weeks. They, they were missing. You didn't even know. But this is a question for all of us. If you should pass away, if you should disappear, would your community miss you? Would your neighbor miss you? And here's another question that may sting a little. Would your children miss you? Would your spouse miss you? Would your family miss you? Supermen are community leaders. Remember what I said earlier, that when the adult male elephants were taken away, the younger elephants uh, were there roaming around and, and they really just could not uh, manage themselves and their emotions. But when they placed back an adult male, it wasn't even their father, but it was a father figure that came their way. The, 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 the commentator said that the other elephants just ran around him they, they were just so happy to see a, a male elephant. That they, they, that it's like they were idolizing that elephant. And the elephant taught them now how to act like men, <laughs> how to be leaders. You don't just go killing rhinos. You don't just go breaking down trees. And the male elephant taught them how to be. Are you influencing your community by teaching others how to be? a man, how to be spiritual, how to live out the principles of God. If you should disappear, would they miss you? You know, a real man in scripture in this encounter that you can look back on is Abraham. Abraham was a warrior as well as he was a faithful spiritual man before God. He was a community leader. When his, his nephew Lot was taken away by four kings, when you read the scripture in Genesis chapter 14, Abraham got his men together and they went and rescued Lot and rescued the, the king of Sodom and brought them back. When the king said, listen, I'll give you some money for what you did. Abraham said, you take it for yourself. You could give some to my men, but I don't want it. That was just my civic duty. I was just doing my part. And if you ask me why I was doing my part, just to the glory of God. God motivates me. The love of God drives me. I'm just doing my community 
work. My brothers and sisters, your presence is important. And Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You're the one in the community that, that keeps the community together. You're the light. So man, don't be ashamed of being a Superman. You've got to go out there and let people see who you are. In the comic book editions of Superman, he would hide himself and, and put glasses on and, and, and make sure people think he was not Superman. Well, today, God wants you to let people know that you are a Superman, that you are his disciple, that you are his follower. So wear it proudly. Let people know who you are. I am a believer in Jesus Christ, and he has sanctified me, is sanctifying me, and I'm able to go out and be a salt in this community because of the teachings of God. You've got to stand for something. And lastly, supermen, supermen give of themselves. Supermen give of themselves. In essence, they, they're, they're, they're willing to be sacrificial. They live sacrificially. What am I talking about? Uh, you know, the Bible states, greater love hath no man than this, than a man laid down his life for another. Ultimately, a, a real man will learn that life is not about hoarding of wealth and being famous in this world, but living for others, giving of themselves. The ultimate superman, the ultimate man in scripture is Jesus Christ. And, and, and Jesus uh, you know, he was in heaven at one point. He was enjoying the comforts of heaven, but he left everything and sacrificed it all so that he could come on this earth and endure what we endure and walk in our shoes so he can understand and feel everything that we go through. And then something happened with this Superman. The weight of the world was placed on his shoulders. And yet Jesus gave more than he received. He was given. He was given of his life. He was given of his time. He was given of his, his energy in all aspects. He was just a giver. And real men will follow the course of Jesus where, where we too will, will take up our daily cross and follow him. And that cross takes a lot out of us. Sometimes it's hard to take up the cross at home where, where your children may be getting on your nerves. Your, your spouse may be getting on your nerves. Your job may be getting on your nerves. But you take up your cross daily and you're bearing it for others. You're carrying that cross so that others can be saved. You're carrying that cross so that your children can have a better life. You're carrying that cross so that your spouse can, can, can enjoy life in a better way. You're carrying your cross daily, not to please yourself. Jesus wasn't carrying the cross to please himself. He was carrying the cross to save others. And each day we carry our cross to help to better those around us. Now, I have here a dumbbell. And I love, to, I love to lift weights. I love to lift my weights. Now, it doesn't show, especially with this big old shirt. I look like a kite just flying in the back jaw. But, but watch this now. The more weight I put on this and I lift it, the stronger I become. The more weight that comes. The Bible says the, 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 the weight of this world was placed upon the shoulders of Jesus. Jesus didn't get weaker. He got stronger. When you have the weight of children in your life, you get stronger, you become matured, you become more intelligent in the ways of handling your children. Some men say, I can't, man, I'm gonna drop this weight and they leave the weight. No, 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 you get weaker. Walking away from your children is like holding kryptonite. You're, you're not gonna get stronger, you're getting weaker. But when you can manage that, you're stronger. Your spouse also needs you. And I know it can be hard, uh, but let me just tell you something. I have no problems with my wife. So I may be one of the few men who gives it, but I love my wife. But I know that's not the case for every situation and scenario that's out there. But if you can carry your weight and learn to love 
like Jesus loved because Jesus loved us before we loved him. And if we can learn to love our spouses, even when we're going through a difficult time, you're getting stronger. And you're also helping your spouse to get stronger. And there comes a time, men, where the, your, your father and mother who took care of you as a child, uh, will, the roles will change where you may have to take care of them. And you may want to abandon that role. But this is where real men say, put on the weight. I'm not going to run from the responsibility. Put more weight on. If that's something I've got to bear, I will bear it with all my strength because I know that I will get stronger. God will give me the ability to be strong, to bear these weights that are laid upon me. So today, I want to stress again, if you want to be a superman in Jesus, you've got to learn to be a man of integrity. Let your yes be yes and your no no. Secondly, be a man who is not afraid to admit his mistakes. Now, let me just say something here. Again, I may be addressing the men, but ladies, these are, these are timeless principles. So I need to say, be a man and a woman of integrity. Let people trust you based upon your word. Let them know that when this brother, when this sister says, I will do something, it will be done. Your word is like a stamp. It says, it's going to be, this is me. Be a man and be a woman who is not afraid to admit his or her mistakes. Confess your sins before God, God says. And I'm, God says in 1 John 1 verse 9, I am faithful and just. To forgive you. But he does say, confess. True men and true women will come before God, will come before others and say, this is where I have wronged. This is where I messed up. Please forgive me. Be a man who is a spiritual leader. And this goes for women as well. Be a man, be a woman who is a spiritual leader. God says, that when he created male and female, he made them in his image. That means when in the home, the male and the female are both prayer warriors and are both studying the Bible, because both are complementing each other, the full picture or a better picture of God is seen, male and female, in his image. You can't just have males teaching or females teaching. We need to have both that reflect the full image of God. Be a man, be a woman who is a community leader. Involve yourself in your community. Can you imagine if there was no MLK Jr. in the civil rights time in the 60s and 50s? What would have happened? You see, we need to be the salt in the world. And when we get involved with our community, whatever the issues may be, we bring a certain flavor a spiritual flavor, a spiritual dynamic. Your community needs you. And lastly, be a man, be a woman who will give of themselves sacrificially. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 14 says, the love of Christ constrains me. That means it compels me. I do what I do because of the love I have for God. I know this message can be hard for some, but today, and I, I really am stressing men here, today I want you to stand up. This, the church needs you men in this time. Society needs you right now. The children out there who are fatherless, and they may have fathers, but the fathers have a bad, they need you as spiritual men to go and teach them how to be men in this day and age. And I do pray and hope that today, as we make this commitment to say, God, help me to be a superman. Help me to, to follow your footsteps. Help me to truly be spiritual and a man or woman of integrity. I want to pray for and with you.
And if today you're saying, God, I want to be that type of man or I want to be that type of woman, just whisper this prayer in your heart as I pray right now. Let's pray. Lord, today we pray that you will take full control of our lives. Help us, Lord, to be men. Help us to be women of integrity. Help us, Lord, to be spiritual. Help us to be prayer warriors, to intercede on behalf of our family. Help us, O oh God, to be community leaders. Help us to be those whom others can look up to, that they can learn and have a better path for themselves. Help us, Lord, to swallow our pride and admit when we have made mistakes. Help us to be brave in doing so, because what you will do in the end in transforming lives will be tremendous. So let us not miss the opportunity of making right what is wrong. And God, finally, help us to truly give of ourselves as you on the cross gave up yourselves for others. So Lord, thank you for the lessons that you're teaching us. Thank you for the men in our church, the women in our church. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. And we pray that you'll continue the revival that you have started in our lives. Bless us to that end, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. So I just want to uh, say we, we don't have a special song to close off, but I just want to say again, uh, may God continue to bless and keep you. Uh, be the superheroes that your family needs. Be the superheroes that your community needs. And until we meet for Bible class, may God continue to bless and keep you. Take care.